Before we start, I would like to give a big thank you to Karnataka, India, and Wisconsin in the United States for being our biggest supporters for this podcast. This is Simply Surviving and I'm your host, Monet. I'm the one and only because like we all know, no one else wants to do this with me. And welcome to your daily motivation for your daily commute. Let's talk about what it's like to be 20 because 20 is a hard time. I'm having a hard time at 20. A lot of us are having a hard time at 20 and none of us can afford housing because housing is hella expensive and people are running around fighting for Stanley Cups. We've reached this era. I'm going to be sitting here very content with my 64 ounce Yeti that can whack a bitch because I'm not about to fight for no Stanley Cup walking around with a trash can. No thank you. No thank you. Before we go ahead and get into this topic, I just want to set the scene for the 20s and what it's like you know a lot of us go ahead and we see 20 as this big defining moment I seen this one this one comment that was made about being your 20s how and I'm sure most of you guys seen it also I've talked about it before being in your 20s is having done so much but done so little to feel like you need to travel to feel like you've done a lot to feel like there's so much going on yet there's nothing going on and there's this high expectation that's set for is when we're 20 and I just feel like 20 is one of those eras where you're finally allowed to do things. Me being the 20 year old that I am, I still feel like an 18 year old. I still feel restricted in the way that an 18 year old feels even though I am 20 and I've been living my own life since I've been 17. I started college at 17 as most of you know and have just been living my life as a free range adult from there. Yet I still can't do certain things because in the United States we have a 21 drinking age limit and I'm not allowed to go to the bars and have with friends. So in ways I still feel restricted, but this is gonna be a podcast about 21 and up basically, even though I'm not 21 and up, so I can't talk about it, but we're gonna just pretend that this is a scenario where, you know, you're 21 and up. I'm gonna talk from experience of someone who has been living on their own for quite a while now this is not gonna be some oh it's my first year of college and I don't know what to do this is gonna be I've been paying my bills for over four years and I'm about to graduate college and I don't know what to do with myself so I just want to go ahead and set the scene for that and make sure that everyone's on the same page as I'm gonna be talking about for this And one of the things I want to go ahead and talk about first is those defining moments. Your 20s is laid out to be this defining era where you figure out who you are. You know, you finally have free reign in the world. Therefore, you can kind of go ahead now and actually do what you want to do without being restricted. Yet, people fail to realize, and again, I'm talking from experience as someone who's only 20 and not 21, you are still restricted in so many ways ways i was having a conversation with my roommate um basing along the lines like you don't know who you are you still need to discover who you are and she literally looked me in my face and said i know who i am i'm like girl no you don't you just became legal to drink in the united states you don't know who you are you still have so much to discover so many more heartbreaks to lead and i feel it's one of those journeys in your adulthood where for a lot of people you're you know just starting to pay your rent by yourself you're buying your own groceries and deciding what your hobbies are and who you want to be around but especially for me going into my 21st year it is the year for the 2003 babies to be up in the club and bust them ass um for me i don't know being 20 is an undefining error for me i don't feel that being 20 should be qualified as a defining era yes it's another era in your life like people turn 30 and they're like oh my god I'm old but for me 20 is very much just a number for me defining eras defining moments are you know when you take those big leaps those big moves personally for me you know my 14 was a big error for me and 17 was a big error for me and it was just because big changes happened in that so I feel we shouldn't necessarily look at 20 as this 
big change because for a lot of people you know you might be 19 going on 20 and you know your birthday might be tomorrow and you're turning 20 but you know you're still in the same spot that you were when you were 19 so if you're still in the same spot when you're 19 and you turn 20 you're still in the same spot then there's no defining error for you no really big changes i mean it's different if you're going 20 to 21 you know you finally drink go out you know there are certain things that qualify as a defining moment and a lot of those don't consider just you changing your age that no that that's not how things work you're not magically gonna like be a year older like you're 19 today and tomorrow you're 20 and now you're a different person that's not how things work things work in a way that change you monumentally in a monumental way you know you moved you like had like a very tough breakup and those things aren't really quantifiable they're not by the date you know <laughs> they just kind of happened so when you think about your 20s don't think about it as this defining era think about big changes in your life as a defining era you know are you going through a big move are you going through a big journey moving to college moving away from college those are big defining moments i just want to go ahead and put that out there before anybody starts getting confused <laughs> like i'm not talking about changing ages i'm talking about big shit okay um let's go ahead and let's get into the expectations versus the reality mm -hmm. a lot of people have this expectation and like i said you know it's this expectation that a number change in your age is going to actually change something when that's not really the case but also with the expectations of being 20 you know a lot of us are unable to afford housing because of the housing crisis like i said in the beginning but you know when we look back on what people were doing in their 20s they were going ahead and buying houses having children the expectations have changed now for you to be 20 it is your especially if you're a woman it's your bad bitch error if you're a man it's very much like you're a man in the world now you have a big boy job you're doing big boy things big girl things to be 20 in this era is to not have kids have a good job go to college a, college is still top tier even even if you're not like on the college grind a lot of it is you have like the social media aspect of things and just the ultimate essence of things i don't know if a lot of you have seen but for me it's just been everybody like all the girls look the same i'm gonna put it out there all the girls look the same all the girls are kind of doing the same thing everyone has this look there's this look that is just you know you're 20 you should look like this type vibes or you should be doing this if you're not doing this you're doing something wrong i remember when there was the whole oh like if you're a traitor type vibes like you know i went ahead and i like didn't go to college but i just learned digital marketing and that's my job now and i've made 20k there's a sense of hu hu why am i stuttering hustle culture <laughs> hustle culture when it comes down to being in your 20s or you know a lot of people don't really want to settle down and have a job you know your 20s when you look at your 20s on social media it's not having a nine to five like you know fast food nine to five it's not stuff like that it's going ahead and traveling doing things but that's not really the reality for a lot of people for a lot of people they're going ahead and struggling to pay their rent because the housing crisis i am going to keep saying the housing crisis because it is real it's real out here people but you know a lot of people are going ahead in their 20s working their asses off no one's just going ahead and vacationing going on spring break every week there are a lot of people now i've seen especially on social media they're living out of their cars and traveling i want to do that i want to do shit like that and it's because i just feel this urge this essence to do something like that and i feel like the expectations for that come with the fact of finding out who you are and identity and discovery within the sense of being 20 being 20 like i said is supposed to be like this defining era this big change era you're supposed to discover who you are when it's not really like that go ahead and think about the people that were on friends and new girl 
and I know that this is just like pop culture wise but just look at them as examples friends new girls any type of sitcom they still have roommates well into their 30s I did you hear me they still have roommates well into their 30s friends is about people that are like 24 or 25 going on 30 friends is not like people from college no that's not what that is and I feel we should be very aware of that scenario. It's okay to live with your parents and be 25 now. Like, that is fine. We all get it. We understand. that We don't see an issue with that, <laughs> like, at all. I get it. I would do the same thing if I didn't have an ego. But, you know, it's okay to have roommates and not live on your own. And you shouldn't have the expectation of, oh, I, like, I need to be living on my own and, like, Oh, I can't afford to live on my own. I'll be paying check to check. But like, it's an expectation now. And I don't want some bitch to be looking at me weird because I live with roommates. No, you're you're allowed to live with roommates. It's like, I'm sure it's fine. No one's gonna judge you. I won't judge you for living with roommates. It is hard out here in these streets, <laughs> as one would say. You know, when it comes to finding your path, it's about finding what you love to do. What are your hobbies? you know, sit down with yourself and just think, you know, what makes me happy? What has made me happy in the past? Go deep back to your childhood and think about all the things that you just genuinely enjoyed. You know, a lot of the times I go ahead and I think about what my life is going to be like after college. And a lot of the times it ultimately results into just thinking what I like to do, what has made me happy in the past. And how am I going to do those things in the future when I'm done with college? Because let's be honest, when life starts, when, after college is over, I'm going to be so fucking bored out of my mind. You think I'm just about to go to work and then sit home in the house all day? No, absolutely not. I am not going to let my work be my entire life yeah i get it some people have very busy jobs that like allow them to travel and stuff but they sleep eat breathe work i'm gonna be the girly and this again comes down to expectations like this is my expectation i'm gonna be the girly i'm gonna go to work i'm gonna come back i'm gonna go to the gym i'm gonna like sit down read my little book do my little podcast you know i'm gonna develop a life outside <laughs> of work you know, especially when it comes to, I feel like I said, you know, multiple times. If I've said, you know, too many times, please leave it in the Q&A so we can talk about it later. Um, what was I saying? Developing relationships and friendships. That's something that is ultimately going to go ahead and define who I am, who I spend my time with, who I am around. The people that you'll be around are ultimately the people that you're going to be like. If you're hanging out with bums, I mean, a bum from a standard that you think they are bums, then you will be a bum because you set yourself in a stage to where that activity is okay. It's like with relationships, if you allow them to treat you a certain way, they will treat you that way for indefinitely. Therefore, if you surround yourself around someone who is below you, and I know everyone is going to have a friend that's a bum. Everyone's going to have a friend that's like probably in the projects, but you want to set yourself around people who are succeeding. I know that's very, I sound like a bitch saying it, but just trust me. You want to set yourself around people who are doing better than you because it's going to go ahead and motivate you. If you're the bum of the group, you're going to you're gonna have a little bit of motivation to not be the bum. That's all I'm going to say. And that is definitely what it is like in my friendship, even in college. And I know, I mean, like I told you guys in the beginning, this is a podcast about moving away from college, you know. I've gone ahead and considered what my life is going to be like, you know, I'm looking at places to live, I'm deciding where I want to be, what type of area I want to be in, what type of space, and it ultimately comes down to what type of lifestyle I want to have. And the unfortunate aspect of it is I'm going to have to leave this, this, I'm going to have to leave all of this, this that I've established, the friendships that I've made, the friendships that I'm still developing, I'm going to have to leave it all. It's going to have to go away within a couple months because I am getting the fuck out of here. I did what I need to do in this city. Therefore, I have no longer a need to be here. And that's just on period. 
I'm about to dip out of here like dipping on cheese sauce like I don't know what else to say that didn't make any sense but I hope you understood what I meant developing new relationships is very very difficult it's hard to leave a group that you've known so well a group that you appreciate and that you value that is something that is very hard but you're going to lose friends along the way you have to curate your friends to the type of lifestyle that you want and if you want bougie bitch lifestyle you need bougie bitch friends i don't know how else to put it that's that's the only way i can go ahead and put it and that definitely has to with do with your identity and where you place yourself in that spectrum you know do your values align with your friendships do your values align with your actions if you have high standard values you need high standard friends that's all that says about that i, I honestly just don't know how else to put it if you want high value energy you have to just surround yourself with high value energy be doing high value things and that includes high value friends that are going to go ahead and motivate you to high value activities the best way i can go ahead and put it to put it nicely and with that i also must talk about once it comes to jobs me personally i've been having such a hard time when it comes to finding a job they say i want to go into the insurance industry and they say oh like insurance needs people and it's a hard market right now and they need like people to sell insurance blah, blah 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 and i'm like how do you need people to sell insurance if it's a hard market and no one's selling insurance that doesn't make any sense you say this industry is lacking but yet they don't want to hire anyone because inflation is high interest rates are high wait no that would be the opposite interest rates are high so they don't want to hire people the economy is like coming out and correcting myself i'm so sorry but you know job hunting is not easy right now it's very hard there are very high standards for people even though i've seen on tiktok that apparently major companies like ibm walmart amazon are gonna not be requiring people to have degrees so you have this whole entire generation me included that has multiple thousands of dollars in student debt that have to go into the industry with all this debt and then you have people that what it just doesn't make any sense it's like i was supposed to go ahead and advance myself and now you're telling me that you're gonna go ahead and give people jobs that don't have degrees and i get it you know it makes sense college doesn't really teach you shit your job is going to train you on what you need to know your job is going to make sure that you need to know what you need to know to do the job like that makes sense but also i will say a lot of people do not know that you can write off your student loan payments on your taxes i will put that out there a lot of people don't know that a lot of people don't know a lot of things about your taxes a lot of people should do a lot of tax research i'll just go ahead and say it out there but choosing a career is hella hard you know and like i've reiterated multiple times living in your 20s i'm not sure where a lot of people are right now please leave a comment if you're listening to this on spotify let me know so i can curate this podcast more indefinitely but when i think about people in their 20s i think about people either in the midst of college or people finishing college and that's kind of where i am with this when it comes to career options and career choices a lot of people don't know what they want to do when they're 20 and if you don't know what you want to do you don't know how to set yourself up you don't know how to move where to move and that is something that can be very scary, especially if you're about to graduate and you're like, I just spent four years doing something, but I don't know what I can do with it. For me, I'm an econ major. What? Tell me what you do with econ. Please tell me what you do with econ because I promise that you don't know anything. You don't know what you can do with econ right now. I promise you if I ask you what jobs I can get, you will search up jobs for econ majors. It's not really defined <laughs> with what I did, you know. An engineer is gonna be an engineer. A marketing a marketing major is gonna be a marketer. That's obvi, you know. It's in the major. Business is gonna do some like business management. It's in the like it's in the name of the major. That doesn't make sense. Anyone doing med school, like doctor, surgeon, bow, done. That's easy. But when you have a more dynamic major, a more broad 
major there's a lot of things that you can do so you're stuck in this confusion you're like okay now that it's over where where do i want to put myself i like i i need to make bank so i can pay off all these goddamn student loans but where do i want to put myself that's gonna be something one i enjoy and be something that pays off well and a lot of these jobs now there is no work-life balance that's why i was talking earlier i'm not about to you think me i'm about to be working 70 hours a week what absolutely not that that's beyond me i get it some people have high work ethics but i want to have a life beyond work i can't just be surrounded by people talking about insurance all day i love insurance trust me i'm very invested in in the industry but there has to be some kind of line to where i can enjoy my hobbies and i can enjoy my job also but keeping my hobbies and my job separate you know my job is a different hobby separate from all the rest like i still want to do other things and that can be something that's very challenging because you know your job is your passion i hope so a lot of people at least 60 percent of people their job is not your passion but in this situation we'll say that your job is your passion you know it's something that you enjoy but it's not something you want to do 100 percent of your time it's not and no one ever got rich off a of salary i'll say that so make sure that you're investing in your roth ra or if you have a traditional ra make sure you're investing in that ra like make sure you have some type of investment going on because a lot of people do not get rich off a of salary and salary does not sustain them the more money you make the more taxes that are going to be taken out of it but if you know how to use your money go ahead once there's high interest rates make sure you're saving you get more return on that high inflation means that the economy is booming low inflation means that the economy is in a recession high interest rates mean that the cost of borrowing money is more so if you want to go ahead and make a big purchase wait till interest rates are low and make a big purchase because then you won't have to pay as much in interest top note i'm bro i'm telling you you study econ you learn some things out here i promise you you can't play with money when you whoo, when you study econ baby it all comes out in the gutter <laughs> a lot of people need to study money i will say that but going ahead and moving on with the fact of career adventures i know i've kind of gone on a tangent with it but financial independence is huge right now it is very huge people want to know how to use their money and one thing i have always said and i will continue to say i will say this with a passion people are broke because they don't know how to manage their money people are broke because they don't understand money people are broke because their money plays them and the government plays them because they don't understand their money i don't know how much i have to iterate there but if you're listening to this podcast on youtube you've seen the hand motions if you're listening to it on spotify there are no hand motions but just know every pause i make there is a hand motion or a water step going on with some strong eye contact trust me a lot of people don't understand their finances a lot of people need to probably read up on what they can deduct off their taxes because there are a lot of things that you can deduct off your taxes you know what i plan on doing i planned on graduating whoa the words did not come out correctly there i plan on graduating college buying a well renting because buying is expensive renting a two-bedroom apartment one bedroom for personal use, one bedroom for business use, writing off the rent paid on that other bedroom as a business expense because I work from home. And I just bought a new MacBook. You think I'm about to pay for that? Write off. I got a new phone. You think I'm about to write off? The all business expenses, write off. Anything I can buy business wise, write off. Woo, absolutely not. There are a lot of things that you could go ahead and write off on your taxes. You just have to go ahead and read up on their, their IRS page. That IRS page will be your blessing. Save your receipts. That state tax will be so low. It will be so low, I promise you. There's a lot of things that people need to learn about money. Go ahead. Nobody got rich off a of salary. Invest your money into a Roth IRA. Go ahead invest your money in some index funds don't try to go ahead and invest in individual stocks that's why they have index funds 
mutual funds will go ahead and take out a percentage of your return so that's why index funds are better you know bonds are always bonds are always going to pay back because the government's just going to go ahead and print more money if they have to pay back their bonds long-term bonds have more return so make sure you're looking at long-term bonds versus short-term bonds the longer you hold the more return you're going to get on your money putting that out there but also you want to make sure that you're putting your money in a high in a high interest saving account because you're again compound interest Compound interest is something that a lot of people don't think about. Compound interest is a game changer. Have you ever seen an exponential equation? An exponential equation is compound. It's compounding. And when you compound your money in a savings account, so that, that's some growth right there. That is some growth right there. I will tell you, I've seen it. I've seen the chart. I've seen the numbers. I've seen what could happen. If you put just $10,000 in a savings account, and I know that sounds huge, but I'm just using an example next year with a four percent return that's over like four hundred dollars and then next year if it's gonna be fourteen hundred dollars and then that times four percent it's just gonna go ahead and continue and escalating higher and higher and higher but you also need to go ahead and budget and i know this is like the topic that no one really cares about because no one gives a fuck but i am telling you guys facts if you want to hear more about this please leave a comment let me know and i can put a full depth video on this i'm just giving like a quick rundown of everything right now but you want to make sure that you're also going ahead and budgeting rich people know where the money is going i promise you i promise rich people know where the money is going poor people will spin 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 until they can't spend anymore a lot of people have credit card limits that are way above the amount that they're making monthly to where they can't pay it off. So then you incur interest on money that you're already borrowing. A lot of people don't understand when it comes to credit cards, you're just spending your future income. Credit card money is not free money. Credit card money is your money in the future. Why do you think that rich people have enough credit to cover their amount of income that they're making? Because they know that they can go ahead and pay it off. And like, bro, I swear, I can go into a rant about this for so long. But we need to move on. I will move on. But please, let me know if you want me to continue talking about this. Because I can go on for ages and make an entire podcast on just money. I want to talk about mental health and well-being. I feel that in this economy... I don't know why it's an economy. In this era of life, we are very open to mental health. It is something that we recognize that our parents probably did and that their parents probably didn't. But at this stage that we're at now, we're very aware of mental health. Especially when you hit your 20s. I just realized I have dyslexia. I realized that um, I have a hard time reading even though I really like to read and like how do I have dyslexia and I read a lot that doesn't make any sense but also just being very aware of your problems and if you have problems how to solve them everybody needs therapy <laughs> everybody needs therapy I don't care if you think you're okay I don't care if you are okay everyone needs therapy you can always talk to your friends but there are just going to be things that a psychiatrist is going to a psychiatrist is going to be able to identify that your friends are not going to be be able to identify i have a lot of anxiety one of my therapists tried to coax me out of my anxiety which i was just like what how are you going to tell me that i don't have anxiety how are you going to gaslight me like what in the reverse psychology are you trying to do but everyone used to at least i feel if you can't afford therapy for the month i say try at least just one month of therapy just like one day just one day out of the month of therapy not an entire month i mean a lot of people can't afford week by week a month but try just one one time a month with therapists and i know some therapists are like over 300 dollars. or i know me personally not sponsored i use um for hers for my therapy and it's a hundred dollars for just one session but those talks are so 
well placed because there is just so much that I want to ungear. I try to deal with things like that on my own, but there's just some things that I just cannot deal with on my own. No matter how much I talk to friends and family, there's just things that they're just not going to understand that they're not going to have any capacity to help me with in any way, shape or form. And that's something that you really have to realize as you're becoming an adult, that there are just some problems that you're not going to be able to solve on your own and that other people that you care about are not going to be able to help you with. But also, you know, other people are going through things in their life, so they're not always going to be able to be there for you and to hold your hand through all of your life and things that you're going through. So you have to look through other routes. And yeah, it's unfortunate that you have to pay someone versus free therapy but at least you're solving your issues and you can't go ahead and be a successful human being if you're always stressed 100 percent of the time there has to be some form of relaxation that you have for yourself have a day to yourself i promise you you will have a blast one thing i love to do is go ahead and go on dates with myself because i'm just so much at peace with who I am, where I am, how I am in my space. A lot of times my favorite thing to do is to put my hands in some hot water when I'm at work and just think about everything that's around me, what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling, not what I'm seeing because my eyes are closed, but just connecting with all of your senses. What vibes am I getting? What are there? There are five senses, right? So like what you're smelling, what you're hearing, what you're tasting if you're eating something and just having like a moment of just fully tasting every element of what you're eating seeing smelling hearing feeling i just love doing that because it just really sets me in what i am who i am keeping in mind that i am a spirit having a human experience a lot of the times and we all need those moments we all need those moments of just like fuck man just like deep breath fuck like god today's been a lot and i just need the world to pause right now there's a lot of stress and burnout that's happening especially with students now have you seen i know a lot of you are listening from wisconsin but have you seen the amount of people that were literally going chaotic with exams bro was literally in his hoodie and prayed before he took his exam there is so much pressure now with things like that. Everybody's going to grad school now. People don't even want to keep a bachelor's. They're like, I need a master's. I need a PhD. And I'm like, bro, I'm done. I'm so tired. Wait, oh, hello. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you guys. I I lost my straw. I lost my straw and it was awkward. I'm so sorry. But people are going through very stressful times. People aren't getting paid enough. Like, things are rough out here in these streets. And then you have social media just making it worse for everyone. I'm seeing people traveling the world for free. I want to travel the world for free. I'm looking into going ahead and house sitting for people where they probably have cameras all in there. Watching me on a live stream and someone's probably going to murder me. You know, I'm looking at routes like that. I'm about to start looking at places that pay you to stay there because there's just so much comparing, especially with the media. You know, there we just have too much connection sometimes. I feel if I could just live in a world, live in the times when they were like sending snail mail and to find out what was happening, you had to read the newspaper. That would be wonderful. That would be great. I would love that. Because right now, when it comes down to it, the role of social media in shaping our perceptions and expectations is just beyond, beyond me. It's beyond me. I want to be the girly that's in a bikini in Puerto Rico in some like random pond in the mountain. Like, I want to be that girl. I want to be that girl that's like drinking champagne in some like candlelit restaurant. I want to be that girl. Because that is all that I'm seeing. And it's just setting this expectation that I should be doing that. And it's making me stressed out. Because I just feel like I'm wasting my 20s by not doing exhilarating things. I had a thought a few days ago. I was like, damn, I, I haven't traveled anywhere. I've been on this planet 
for 20 years and I haven't gone outside of the country. Yes, like last year I went to Puerto Rico, but like I haven't really done anything. Like I haven't gone anywhere. I was like, should I move to Europe? Should I move to Europe and like travel to a different country every day? You know, I want to experience people. I like, I want to see different cultures and things like that. And I'm like, listing out how many countries there are in the world. There's 192. Doing the math. How many can I see per year in like 10 years to see all of them? Isn't that crazy? Isn't that so delusional? Is that not delusional? 192 divided by 10, 19 countries per year. Is that not crazy? How insane am I to where I think that I need to go to every country in the world in under 10 years? A lot of times when I go ahead and when I think about my future, I'm like, I am not going to make it past 40. <laughs> the pause, the pause. Oh my God, the pause. Yes, when I think about my future, I just imagine it as in I'm not going to make it past 40. So I need to do everything I want to do now before 40. Honestly, I think I would be fine dying at 40. If I finish reading all the books that I wanted to read and I finish my list of 300 things I want to do in life, I would be satisfied. I would be done. I'd be like, okay, I'm done now. Take me away. I'm over it. I've, I've done everything I wanted to do. You know, I'm kind of like done here. I feel completed. I don't have anything else that's like unfinished business. I'm done. You know, and that is just something that's become a reality for a lot of people. I seen Cat Williams today saying, if you went about life thinking that every day was your last. And at this point, it's kind of getting there. It's kind of getting to the point where Every day is about to be your last. The apocalypse is, is up on us. <laughs> the world is ending. God is coming. Jesus is coming. What What do you do? Like, there's always a crazy guy in some town that's like, Jesus is coming. Judgment day is here. <laughs> I feel like we're at that point now to where we just want to go ahead and live the fullest life that we can as if today was our last day. We want to dress like if we were to die today, our clothes that we die in would be our ghost clothes. There's just so such a high standard set for us and we're only 20 <laughs> we're only 20 and we already have this high standard set for us like let me live let me be let me discover who I am on my own terms that's just how I feel I want to do what I want to do and I want to do what I want to do in the time that I want to do it that's how things should be I shouldn't feel pressured by society to do what I want to do in my times tell. Live your 20s the way you want to live your 20s. Live your 30s the way you want to live your 30s. But just make sure you know how to use your money. That is all I have to say. And I would like to go ahead and conclude there. Because if I continue, I will just ramble. But I will say one thing. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't even know what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes. You wouldn't plan your life. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> my final remarks and I lose my train of, train of thought. Oh my God. I was trying to think of a TikTok that I seen that was like, you wouldn't do a math problem. In your head you wouldn't do a complex okay i have it now okay okay final word to wisdom you wouldn't do a complex math problem in your head you would do it on paper so don't try to plan out your life in your head because that's not gonna work you can plan out your life on paper too but i doubt that that plan will ever work because things always change and embrace the uncertainties because like i said you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow you don't know what's gonna happen five years from now you don't even know what's gonna happen 20 minutes from now so just go ahead and embrace that and embrace what's happening in your life. Take a moment to think about it. Be like, damn, my life right now. Embrace who you are. Embrace what you are in a good way, not a bad way. But, you know, just take in the moment. And I promise you, you'll feel a little bit better about life, you know. 
you're doing what you need to do predestination you were supposed to be in this moment right now <laughs> i don't know what else to say thank you guys for going ahead and listening to the podcast if you enjoyed this podcast please leave a rating on spotify if that is your listening platform or apple Podcasts, whatever you're listening from i have over 71 platforms if you did not know shout out to wisconsin and india katanaka